And now we come to our portion of preaching the word that we have just read. And as we notice, um, as we go through 1 John, even over the past few weeks, there has been a strong focus on loving one another. Several weeks ago, when Evan preached, we learned about passing from death to life and how we are sure of this by the love we have for our brothers and sisters. And as I recapped last week, um, the purpose of that message was to spar us on and encourage us to love our brothers and sisters. And last week, we looked briefly at the relationship between love for our brothers and sisters and understanding and acknowledging the deity of Jesus, that he is the son of God. And that those moments of loving our brothers and sisters are those victories in our love that should encourage us and continue us. Now, as we look at this morning's scripture, you'll notice again that there are many of these themes that come back. And John has been building up a, a series of linking arguments that bring in these themes of love, of professing faith in Christ, of understanding that Christ is the Son of God, and that our love for God is reflected in our love for one another. And part of this morning's scripture focuses on overcoming the world. And I thought we should start there at just looking at what what does that mean? What is in this world to overcome? And naturally, as we look around, there is, I mean, in the midst of this pandemic, we can, we can see it for sure, the calamities that take place, the natural calamities, things that are out of our human control. But also we see a lot of hate, a lot of selfishness. And as John says earlier in 1 John, there is pride and there is lust. And it is these things that are overcome when we overcome the world through our faith. And when we come overcome the world through our faith, there are really two things that are being spoken about here. There is the eternal overcoming. As John says in 1 John 2, 17, just several chapters before this, the world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. And so in chapter five here, John is reminding us that as we overcome the world, there is this look to the future of eternal life that is promised and given by Jesus. And second, though, in, in some ways very more practical for us this morning, again, is this in the now the people that are born of God are in present overcoming the world. And again, we look back to what is there to overcome, and it is the hate and the selfishness and the pride, the lack of caring for others, the lack of caring for brothers and sisters, the putting ourselves above all else. That is what is overcome in the world. And as we see, it is overcome by our faith. As Hilda read, it says, this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. It is our faith, by our faith, that we overcome the world. And the result of this faith, again, is this love for our brothers and sisters. Last week, I had mentioned how John was linking certain themes together, how one naturally leads to another, and it's, it's almost a circular argument. And again, we see this this morning. We see that overcoming the world is really a way of saying that we love God and our brothers and sisters, and that loving God and our brothers and sisters is being born of God. That is what it means to be born of God. But also that being born of God results in us having faith in Christ. And finally, again, that faith in Christ is overcoming 
the world. And so when we read John and we see him break things up, and as I mentioned last week, it kind of shift rapidly between these themes. Again, it is because we cannot take any one of them out of its context of, of everything that surrounds it. As we have faith in Christ, as we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, we are born of God. That is, it is, it is promised and it is evident of that. But also as we love God, we love our brothers and sisters. What we also learn in chapter five here of first John is John now connects love and faith. As we saw last week, love and the acknowledgement as Jesus as the son of God, they were connected strongly. And now we see that it is faith in Jesus as the Christ, as the savior of the world of creation. He who came to redeem all of creation and all of humanity back to each other and to God. That love and faith mean that we are born of God. And in this love and faith, John alludes that we are to keep God's commandments. In fact, it, that is how we know we have love for God, to keep his commandments. And he goes on to say that his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone born of God, again, overcomes the world. And one of the one of the commentators that I read on this part, he wanted to highlight that this the burdensome that is not found in the commandments of God is because as we live in the community of God, loving one another, that those commandments themselves are actually fulfilled. Again, it's this you can't separate the two, that as we live as born of God, adopted into his family, we are living as those who love their brothers and sisters. And this love is a love that, as we all know, requires action. Love can be a noun, but love is also a verb. And in the keeping of the commandments of God, those commandments that, God, that John spoke about earlier, commandments of believing in the name of God's son, Jesus the Christ, and to love one another as we love God. In keeping those commandments, there is a requirement that we do not sit back in love, but that we move forward in love. This love might mean praying for others. It may mean calling on others. It may mean sharing a word of encouragement. But the fact is that in our scripture this morning, although we are being reminded that it is through our faith in Christ that we overcome the world and that the overcoming of the world is brought out in our loving actions, that the actions need to happen. That we do not love theoretically, that we do not love in abstract, but that we love in real in the same way that Jesus loved in real as he became incarnate so too our is our, our love to become incarnate towards one another and so this morning it's it's funny our, our message ends up being very similar to the last several as john has been drilling this home that our love is to be for one another and that it is to be real and tangible and I think what can help us achieve this love or understand this love or reconceptualize this love is that the love necessarily comes with our faith, as I've said before. And we can release ourselves of the burden of trying to strive to love one another, but rather find that love in the fact that we love God. I'll also note that it's similar to last week. John does the reverse here, where he says that we, we know our love by God for the love of, children, of the children of God, but also we know our love for God by the carrying out of his commandments. And he does a reversal of what he had last week. 
again, to show that so much of our faith in Christ, so much of our belief in Jesus as the Son of God, so much in our pursuit of overcoming the world through that faith and love, that our love for God, that our love for one another, that they are intricately entwined together that we cannot have one of those without any of those. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. And those commands are to believe and have faith in the Son of God and Jesus the Christ, and also to love our brothers and sisters. So rather than showing our love for God by loving our brothers and sisters. We love our brothers and sisters to show our love for God as well. And so this morning, while we contemplate this word, I ask that we think in our community where we are now. Think of this Sunday and think of those who we see on this screen. And think of those who we do not see on this screen. And contemplate a way that even after this service that we could pursue showing our love for one another. That we don't sit back and say, yes, of course we love our brothers and sisters, which is fine to do. But at the same time, find tangible ways to act in that love. And again, let this love come naturally not in a pursuit of struggling and striving before, before, as we read in Matthew, Christ says his burden is light, his yoke is light, that we take on his yoke. And that is what John is referring to here, that the commands that we have from God to love one another are not burdensome, and that that love we have comes from God, and it is wrapped up in our faith even with Jesus. So I'll end this morning just by again encouraging us as we go through the book of 1 John to be pursuing in an easy yoke the ways in which we love our brothers and sisters, the way that we can edify Christ by mimicking his love, by letting our love not be just in our mind, and letting it not just be in our heart, but letting it be incarnate in the world. And let us be spurred on by this idea of overcoming the world through this love. That we may overcome it in the future, but that we may all overcome it in the here and now, moment by moment. I'll leave us to contemplate on that.